Hello, everyone. Today is Thursday, July 30th, 2020, and this is Week in Charts. I just want to thank all you guys and girls for attending tonight. With the markets like they've been, I don't know if I'm going to have to move the shows tonight or not. I know a lot of people have asked me in the past to move to the nights because they, they're off saving lives and building buildings and repairing transmissions and other great things during the day. So we'll have to see about that but uh, maybe who knows so what we we talk about well obviously current market conditions and i have a tremendous amount to say about that your tw your questions on trading your favorite stock picks if you don't mind keep your questions relative to the slides just so my add doesn't kick in and then once we get to the live charts after i get through with the slides you can ask any question you want and also hold off on your stock picks until we get there too just and that's for your benefit so I don't miss any or they don't get buried in the questions. And if you don't mind, ask about one stock at a time. So what we talk about as far as the focus, could we be in the right place at the right time? As you know, I've been doing a little Darvis research lately. And the bottom line with that stuff is everything works better with trend. And Darvis was in the right place at the right time and if you go back and watch a week of charts from a week ago or two weeks i forget exactly when but i showed the s p charts from 1957 through 59 and i think 58 is when he made most of his money or the crux of his money and started making really good money and the market was going straight up now one of the criticisms that some people have given darvis is that well he was in the right place at the right time well, you have to recognize that you're in the right place at the right time. And in the article, should I ever get it finished, is I mentioned that I once met a trader who made $80 million. And this was back in the day when everybody knew everybody and we had some business dealings going on with him. And the first thing I asked him when I met him, I'm like, hey, did you really make $80 million? He said, yeah, but Dave, you gotta understand, I was, a man with one eye in the land of the blind and i was in the right place at the right time and i cannot do that again now you can't take away the fact that it made 80 million dollars obviously that money comes from somewhere and probably a lot of those traders especially since the market that he was trading was a zero sum game so you could be in the right place at the right time but you need to recognize it. and i think we could be in that place right now before we get into all that, as a disclaimer screen, as you know, you can lose money trading, or as often summing up, all predictions are about the future, and a lot of stuff can happen between now and then. I stole that from Greg Morris. So, could we be in the right place at the right time? About a month or so ago, I missed a couple of big trades, probably more than a couple, but I was willing to admit one or two of them. And I talked about the lesson I learned. And Acres of Diamonds, the story is this gentleman wanted to go out and mine diamonds or find diamonds. And he was pretty excited about the whole process. So he sold all his possessions and traveled the world. And I think he ended up broke in the process. Well, the person he sold his farm to, or whatever, his property, went down to the creek one day and saw something shiny and it was a diamond and I come to find out it turned into the biggest diamond find in the world and there's this guy that left town and became a pauper while the guy who bought his property became rich so it's kind of like you know you need to look in your own backyard and every day I publish a Landry list and every now and then especially lately I'm so excited to chase rabbits and I'm going to talk a little bit about that in a few minutes, that sometimes I forget to look in my own backyard, check my own list. And this was on the list a few days ago, and notice that it was an accelerated uptrend and it began to pull back. Now it would have had a trigger, likely, as it rallied out of the pullback. And even if you didn't take the trigger, it formed a pattern I call a trend pivot pullback. And that's where you enter above the high. By the way, if you knew, if you're newer to trading, second entries, meaning that the first entry triggers and then the market pulls back a little bit, giving you that second entry, can be a really good way to trade. Now, you will occasionally miss a big winner or two, but you'll also miss a heck of a lot of losers when the market just fakes out. 
And I've told this story, I think, last week and weeks prior. But Kevin Haggerty told me once that he, when he got a new guy in the office, he would only let them trade second entries until they got the hang of it, until they got some good trades under their belt and understood trading and money management and everything else, as opposed to just kind of throwing them out there and they, they're kind of chasing everything. He got them to focus on those second entries until they can prove themselves. And it sort of stacked the odds in their favor a little bit. Now, they wouldn't be uh, super profitable because they probably would have missed a few trades early on, super, pro super profitable as fast as possible, I think is what I'm trying to get to. But they would be consistent in being more profitable or more accurate over time. So second entries, you're likely to miss more losing trades. And psychologically, it's a good place to be if you're willing to occasionally let a market take off without you. So anyway, this would have been a second entry type of trade if you missed the first entry. And the point I'm trying to make, and I'm kind of beating myself up, is that it was all there. You had a nice clean entry or even a second entry on this particular stock, and I neglected to take it. And I can go back and look at my trades on that day, and I probably was off chasing some rabbits and, and all this other shiny objects that seem to be out there right now, not to mix metaphors. But anyway, as you can see right here, it was on my Landry list for that day. And this is what happened in the stock. It began to take off. Even on that gap higher, that would have still been a legitimate entry. And that would have been above that pivot point high. And then the stock got bought out. So <laughs> kind of beating myself up on this. I was just talking with somebody earlier, a few minutes ago, and I asked if they had read Andy Duke's thinking of bets, and they said they had not. And what what's great about the book is she talks about the importance of separating luck from skill. And it, it, she draws upon, I'm trying to think of the guy's name, Kannerman and Tversky, and I hope I didn't butcher their names, but they wrote Thinking Fast and Slow. And a few other of these guys, and their, their names escape me at the moment, but they talk about, oh, Terrence O'Dean talks a lot about separating luck from skill. And I think she talks about that in the book. But before that digress too far, basically she said that bad poker players or traders, whatever you want to, however you want to look at it, tend to blame bad trades on bad luck and good trades on skill. And Terrence O'Dean talked about the fact that outcomes are noisy and a lot of Good trades could have bad outcomes, and a lot of bad trades could have good outcomes. And I was talking with a client earlier, and I said, you know, if you could figure out how to separate luck from skill, you probably would own the world. Yes, Lauren, it is it is live. You are. What time is it over there? Lauren is joining us from Australia. Let me give you a shout out to Australia. So anyway, and in her book, she talked about how this really good poker player, even though he won the tournament or won the game or whatever at the bar, he would be beating himself up saying, you know, I could have played this hand a lot better. And boy, I made some mistakes here. And you find that a lot in your better traders. They tend to talk about how they could have done better. And I'm always doing that. I'm always kind of beating myself up at the end of the day, even if I if I feel like I really had a good day and really did well, I could think of many things that I didn't do well. So anyway, not that I'm the grand poobah or anything, but I think that when you reach that level where you kind of beat yourself up at the bar, so to speak, about your trading, good, bad, or indifferent, I think you've reached a point where you're beginning to separate that luck from skill. And this is why I show you a lot of my mistakes because it forces me to not make as many mistakes. And that's one advantage I have being an educational business. I see a lot of others' mistakes. Although I will say the Facebook group with the camaraderie we have there, I think that's that's helping everyone. I think we're all benefited, benefiting from that present company included. So anyway, this was a mistake I made. And, you know, just a few weeks ago, I said, from now on, I'm going to check my own backyard before going off to 
chase shiny objects. So I missed this trade. And if anybody here, well, I know most everybody here is on the service, but if you did catch this SOGO trade, please let me know. So at least somebody profited from that. Now, here's one that I did manage to catch, and it was an accelerated uptrend, and it pulled back nicely. And you can see here it is on the Landry list a few days ago. And it triggered, and I was able to get partial profits out, and now I'm trailing a stop. And it came back in a little bit today, but so far so good on that one. So I checked my own backyard. Now here was one recently where I did manage to beat myself up for prior trades missed. And I noticed that this one was on my watch list and it was in a nice accelerated uptrend. They had a really nice looking pullback. And I actually got in a little aggressively I wouldn't call that front running a setup, but I got in fairly aggressively intraday on this one. And my thinking was if I was able to get a swing, get a intraday profit out, then I would turn it into a swing trade. Now, before I digress too far, one thing I'd caution you on is don't be a pure day trader and then every now and then willy nilly take day trades home. And I think last week I talked about that. I knew a day trader once and every now and then he takes stocks home, which was great because the market was doing really, really, really good. But sooner or later, you're gonna get whacked. And there's the old commodity adage, eat like a bird and defecate like an elephant. And you can easily do that. In other words, take little small pieces, make little small profits and then get absolutely cream. But keep in mind, that's not what I'm doing. I'm just trying to get a head start on a swing trade. And believe me, the swing trade to intermediate term trading is where the real money is and you can see it took it a few days to really really get going but i was able to take partial profits within a couple days at this level here and then so far so good on that one now i checked my backyard once again now today in the weekly charts i came in for a few minutes and said look guys i'm going to do the show tonight as most of you are here no and I was actually, one of the reasons, the main reason was because there's so many opportunities lately, I didn't want to miss any of them. And I actually missed, I think it was the S&P futures I missed by about 10 points while I was just doing that brief little period of show. And I nearly missed this one. I, in fact, I got in uh, half a point or a point higher than I intended. But anyway, this was on a Landry list coming into today. And it had a nice longer term uptrend, nice little pullback in here. So it was set up as a position trade. And I liked it and I saw it was moving and I thought, you know, this might be a good intraday trade. And I ended up getting in here instead of the, the pullback. You could see that happened a little bit earlier and then had a really nice rally higher. Obviously, I was able to take partial profits here and I got stopped out with the trailing stop here. Now, one thing I'm gonna talk a lot about in this particular market is the giving up of open profits, or I'm gonna to touch upon it in, in a few minutes. And you could see, I did give up a considerable amount of open profits, but I already took some profits off the table. And it's kind of crazy. If you're watching those open profits during the day and open losses in some cases, your equity is all over the place with this current volatility. But there are tremendous opportunities. And by the way, one thing you have to be incredibly careful of is A, not making too many observations. And I know I'm guilty because I'm I'm really on the screen a lot more than I've ever been. I used to, of course, the gyms are closed now, unfortunately. I guess they're back open, but I'm kind of scared to go. That's my excuse at least. But I was doing pretty good for a while. But I used to put on my trades in the morning, put on my trailing stops if it was an intraday trade, and I would go off to the gym and then come back and work on projects and everything else and try not to stand in front of my quote screen all day long. But now there's so much activity going on, I find myself spending more and more time there. But you do have to be careful, and I want to touch upon a few of those things as we go through tonight's presentation. The volatility is whack. 
if you haven't noticed. And I was editing an older webinar that I did. Actually, it was a course that I did, stock selection course. And I was editing that a couple of months ago. And I noticed that I, the volatility, I think, was between like 40 and 50, where we were finding most of our opportunities, if that high. And that was kind of the sweet spot. And as a general statement, I said, that's probably about where you normally find your vol find your opportunities. But the volatility has become so crazy lately. If you look at my list for tomorrow, this is tomorrow's list. Notice that we have a lot of triple digit volatility stocks in here. And it used to be if the stock was in the 80s and 90s, I'd warn everybody like this is just the craziest stock ever. And as I've said a thousand times before, and I think in the stock selection course too, is that the, the biggest volatility or highest volatility stock I ever remember was back when the rare earths were really moving and uranium stocks just had ridiculously high volatility. And I think I recommended one, we traded it. UNM, I think, and uh, the molybdium stock, whatever one that one is. I don't think it's, it, I don't think it's, it even exists anymore. It might have been rare, R A R E. Anyway, those those guys had volatility readings in the 140s, and that was kind of an aberration as far as going out and trading them. But right now we have volatility and structure. Now, by that, I mean some of these stocks actually trade cleanly. They tend to go up day after day after day after day. In other words, persist. And then they have these somewhat orderly pullbacks or maybe like trend knockout or something. Now, it's not orderly if you're already long the market and you're getting absolutely creamed in your position. But if you take a step back and look at some of these charts, in fact, after this presentation is posted on YouTube, go up and go in and watch, look at some of those charts that I just mentioned. And notice that they were fairly clean stocks. So if you can get volatility with structure, it's a really an amazing thing. Now, let me just show you how whack volatility is. This is candy, K-N-D-I. And I don't want to, it's a slippery slope when you start trading these wild and crazy ones. But it was, I just saw it breaking out and breaking out in a big way. And it was kind of an S and G trade. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about S and G trades in one minute. And you can get in a lot of trouble over time in these. But I did, for the heck of it, I saw the stock move, and I said, "Well, let me just take a little tiny position and just see what happens for S and Gs." And this is what happened. Now I did take partial profits here, and I actually got stopped out right there on the remainder. So it was a quick little 30, 40 minute trade. And again, just kind of like an S and G type of trade. Now, the way it worked out is I wasn't able to get all my shares off at my initial profit target, even though I thought I did. And then when I got stopped out, I noticed in my portfolio, I had 23 shares left over. And I said, well, you know what? Just for fun, I'm going to keep those 23 shares on. And to my amazement, when I came in this morning, those 23 shares had a profit of $300 at one point this morning. And part of me thought, well, I'm just going to go ahead and take them off. And the other part said, no, it's 23 shares. Just, just let them go. Let's see what happens. So we'll have to see what happens with that. But the reason I'm showing you this chart is not for you to rush out and trade these crazy, crazy, crazy stocks like this, even though those other stocks I showed you are pretty crazy too, okay? But just to show you how insane the volatility is. Now, another bad example here, <laughs> because I did I did trade a little bit. But here's Kodak. Kodak went from $2 to $60. Unless you've been on their rock, you probably know that by now. But it's just a great example of what ridiculous volatility is out there. Now, what I did with this particular one, I have someone that I'm that I've been, he's been a client for years and years and, and we uh we kind of rib each other every now and then pick on each other a little bit and he's super super active he's actually doing some scalping or a lot of scalping and I'm, i'll mention that and talk about that in a few minutes but i was just for fun he had called me around eight o'clock yesterday and just for fun i was thinking you know this thing is moving pre-market let me let me just see if i could tease him a little bit and see if see if he jumps in and 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 playing around with that, I ended up 
jumping in on this stock. And unfortunately, I, my platform doesn't allow me to put in trailing stops, automated trailing stops, which I would use on an intraday trade. And so I went ahead and just exited because I couldn't get any work done. It was bothering me because I had to sit there and babysit this position. And of course, the market, it opened higher and it just ran up another uh, 50 points or whatever it was. Uh, the question is, any reason using long charts? No, I use arithmetic charts, okay? The reason this is log is because I just grabbed these. I like grabbing these white charts off of stockcharts.com because they they just show up really well in, in web presentations versus a dark chart, okay? So my actual charts that I would look at during the day, I have everything set to dark, at least where I can set things to dark. I do use FinViz, but that's still white, obviously. I do use arithmetic, arithmetic charts. I don't see the need to use log charts. But yeah, Lauren, good eyes. In this particular case, you notice that this is a log chart. I did notice that these numbers were squinched up right as I was going live tonight. But no, normally I use an arithmetic chart, but I think stock charts sometimes defaults to a log chart. Now, here's the thing. I really think we're in the right place at the right time. So how do we profit from being at the right place at the right time? And I thought about this presentation and I said, I started working on it early this morning. I'm like, you know, there's no way I'm going to get in everything that I want to talk about tonight, but I'm going to throw out a lot of concepts and a lot of thoughts. And then I think I'll probably have to flesh it out or will flesh it out in more detail in coming weeks. But I wanted to get some thoughts out there as soon as possible. So how do we how do we play this? Well, first thing is play your game and tread lightly if you play someone else's. And I could give many examples here. And I have I have had a little bad discipline here and there. If I'm gonna be perfectly frank with you by playing some of those wild and crazy breakouts, but I'm trying to I'm trying. I am keeping those positions fairly small. I have the client I was talking about earlier, he's a really good scalper. And I learned really fast that I'm not a good scalper. And I've always preached against all this in and out trading, but he was making so much money and still is because the volatility is so insane right now that I thought I'd try my hand at it. And I made a little loss a little, but overall I think I failed miserably. And I realized that I worked for 30 years <laughs> to reach a point where I could put on trades and go to the gym or go ride my bike or get a little exercise or do something, right? Other than stare at a screen all day. And I found myself getting drawn back into the flickering ticks as someone that David, I have his name, but I don't have it in front of me. But David Keller from Stock Charts talked about the, the flickering ticks. So trying to play his game did not work for me. And that's just a lesson relearned and we all tend to have to relearn these lessons and then there's other traders out there that are playing this volatility and absolutely printing money and that's kind of sucked me in a little bit to this and you'll notice that i'm more active now than i've been in a long long time and i just think that's the market we're in so in playing my game like i showed you earlier I'm looking right now at the relative strength intraday on the Landry list. And of course, if anything's an official recommendation, I go ahead and take that as explained in the service using the entry, the stop, and the initial profit target. So that's one way to play the game. And those, those especially the BLNK trade just set up perfectly as a trend trade. Now the, the TLSA trade ended up turning into more of a day trade type of thing, but it still would have triggered as a position trade. So play your game, okay? It's like I don't want to to change methodology change methodologies midstream when I've been doing so well for so long, and and not all the time so well. Obviously, as a trend trader, as I often say, you will spend a lot of your time less wealthy because you're going to give up some of your open profits quite often. And of course you could stop out here and there wait while waiting for that nice trend to come along. But again, intraday relative strength is a pretty good thing to do. And you can 
get that in a variety of packages. In Telechart, I just set the real time to intraday percent change for the day. And in Thinkorswim and other packages, you could do the same exact thing. So I keep those watch lists and just pay attention to those to see whether or not I should be in some of those stocks. And it just will remind me to look at my own stocks first. So intraday relative strength is a good thing to do. As I've said before, I've had one client that did incredibly well a few times in history when we're in markets like this. And all he was doing was staying in the top two or three high performers in the Landry list. Just to throw out a little fodder maybe for research, if you are gonna play something like a gap and go, like a, a stock gaps higher, or if you're playing some sort of intraday breakout. And one thing I've been noticing lately, John R in our group, our Facebook group talked, to, talked about a pattern that I just dubbed return to paradise. And let me see if I could draw that in real quick for you. I'm trying to think of it, of a live example. I think a, I'm long a stock that could be a return to paradise stock and i'll find when we go to the live charts i'll find it for you but let me just draw it in real quick so return to paradise he was pointing out that a lot of stocks lately rally like crazy they get ahead of themselves and then they come back in but then they return back to their old highs so and you'll see this pattern over and over and over in today's market so they take off like this and they come back down and then they kind of base out for a while and then they go up again and return in old highs. Now, I'm seeing this pattern happen on an intraday basis. So if you're watching the biggest gainers on the day, a lot of times they'll take off, come back in and then take off again. And you could do a couple of things. This sometimes is what's, what Haggerty used to call a slim jam where you get a very, very narrow consolidation and look for a breakout of that. And sometimes you can put a stop right below that low, okay? And as a spoiler alert, I'm gonna say it, money management, money management, money management. If you're doing this kind of intraday trading and these wild and crazy issues, make sure you're using some money management. Now, another thing you might do intraday similar to this is if it doesn't have a huge rally up and a huge retrace, then you might actually look to play that breakout later in the day. Not a huge breakout trader, but some of these breakouts can work. Or just another alternative is, let's say you do, it does come out of this base later in the day and then pulls back a little bit. That might be a good way to play it if you're playing something like that, playing outside of the core methodology, okay? In other words, the pullbacks and things like that. Now, one thing, and I'm and I'm working hard to wrap my head around this because you can't chase rainbows all day long. I think it eventually will kill you. And I often preach against day trading. And as I've said a thousand times, I spoke to a conference of day traders probably 10 years ago. Well, it's at least five years ago. And nobody in the room was older than 30 years old, maybe one guy, two if you count me, you know. <laughs> and it is a younger person's game because the burnout you're you're making too many decisions and it does wear you down and the activity i've been doing lately it, it has begun to wear me down a little bit and as i often say your trading will spill into your life and your life will spill into your trading and my wife is like she notices that i'm a little bit more distant lately because i'm just burnt out by the end of the day and tired or whatever and so probably not giving enough attention to the family and then that's creating some um issues and and obviously that's coming back into my trading and then you know she now understands that this is an incredible opportunity now and i promised that i was gonna <laughs> try to be a little less obsessive in everything good luck with that but anyway so where i'm going with this is you want to figure out how to take the best of the best of the best of the best setups so make sure you have like a nice daily setup behind you like something that's a pullback something that I would publish on the Landry list, and then maybe look for an intraday entry on that. And then, and then never forget the real money is in the position trading, although some of the day trades have, have been amazing lately. And I, I 
stop short of using the word day trade too much because it's more of an intraday trade because if I get in a position, I want to be in that position all day long at least if it's an intraday trade. But figure out how to take the best of the best setups. And a few months ago, I would have said, look, if you're going to do an intraday trade, just trade opening gap reversals. And by the way, take the best of the best of those. And you might wait three weeks for a good looking opening gap reversal. And, and when you get a perfect opening gap reversal, it's kind of that Jimmy Rogers wait until there's money lying in the corner, walk over and pick it up type of trade. So do the same thing if you're gonna play these intraday trades and then you don't have to play the intraday trades, okay? You could simply just take the position trades and make sure that you maybe put in hard orders, okay? Like in a case like BLNK, I did have a hard order again, but like something like the SOGO, which I completely missed, just if you like the setup, put in a hard order to make sure you take it. That's one advantage I have when I'm following the stocks that I officially recommend is that I know I have to get in at a certain point. So I just sort of, I almost mechanically follow that except for maybe taking profits on occasion. I might take profits on a near miss or I might hold a little longer through a stop, Nick, as I often preach. But for the most part, it's almost like an automatic thing I do when I'm following those service setups. So the point about those stocks is that I have a definitive plan in place and I'm guilty and there I go beat myself up, up again, but I'm guilty of not having a definitive plan outside of those service stocks. And that's how I miss something like a SOGO, something I'd really liked, but it wasn't an official setup because maybe it was a little too volatile or maybe we had enough setups on for that day, whatever the case may be. But it forces me to follow the plan and so plan the trade and then trade the plan i know it's cliche but make sure you do that are you chasing rabbits it's kind of interesting a few days ago i was talking with this, the same guy i was talking about earlier and we were talking after hours and i had so many stocks in my portfolio i noticed that the equity thank god was going up in after hours and i and i kind of laughed and i said I'm not sure which stock is even going up right now. And he said something that made a lot of sense. You're chasing a lot of rabbits and it kind of hit home. And that's, it really got me thinking lately about accountability. And we have this amazing freedom that we could do whatever the freak we want trading, right? Well, the problem is there's no checks and balances on ourselves and dalio's principles i probably need to break that book out again and take a look at that he talks a lot about checks and balances and we all need checks and balances and i think we need that in today's market and i've been private messaging one of you guys and you know who it is i don't want to uh, i don't want to out you <laughs> but you're trading a lot a lot of stocks and and you know so am i because i'm getting a little caught up in the excitement and when it's working, it's like butter. But then every now and then, I think we both kind of realize that we might be over trading a little bit. And it's a it's a fine line to work to to uh, what's the what's the word? It's a fine line between getting those best opportunities and then chasing every opportunity. And and that's that's not an easy thing to do. But if you find yourself going after a whole lot of stocks, just figure out a way to do a little Pareto principle and narrow it down a little bit to where you might be getting fewer setups, but you're willing to let a few things go. And that's the hard part. I, I get that. And as I'm going to say in one minute, you can't kiss all the women. Now, don't small. I'm not sure what I meant by that. <laughs> I think the I think the thing is you want to keep your risk to reward asymmetric and i think what i was initially trying to say there was go in and figure out a way to where you're taking a very small risk and make sure it's a higher probability trade with potential for a really big move higher and just find out find what works for you the opening gap reversals again like i said earlier the slim gems after something has a big run-up intraday comes back in. I'm seeing that work now. I don't want to chase my own tail 
but I do think there is a church of what's happening now aspect. And I used to tell you to stay away from the church of what's happening now, but I'm afraid that we have a golden opportunity here. And I think we have to be willing to chase some of these opportunities. Now, here's the thing. If you have a small position on and you catch the mother of all trends, you'll still do pretty good. Okay. So let's say, I mean, going back to that, you know, let's talk in hypotheticals. And what would the world be without hypothetical questions, right? Stephen, right? Going back to that candy tray, let's say I could have held on to 500 shares or whatever, and it goes up 20 points. <laughs> you know, that's that's $10,000. So that's a tremendous amount of money. So if 23 shares, or what did I say? 23 shares was $300. Imagine what, and 500 might even be too much, but let's just say a couple hundred shares, right? Would be like thousands of dollars. So if you do catch one and it really, really takes off, like the Kodak or something like that, even if you just had 100 shares on, 50 point run, it's $5,000. Okay. And I was, I wake up every morning and I write my morning pages. But in a case like that, if you could, end up with a 10 time reward, let's say you're risking $400 on a trade and you end up with 40 points. I know it's, it's a little extreme and it doesn't happen that often, but you, you certainly have stacked the odds in your favor. Now, so if you don't catch the mother of all trends, you're going to survive to trade another day or trade another trade. But one thing that I've been guilty of lately, and a lot of you guys that I've interacted with on a private message basis, is that we all seem to be chasing a lot of rabbits again. And one thing, for instance, I noticed today, because today just seemed like a fantastic day where you just had to trade and take these opportunities. But I did notice that three or four or five of these trades added up to a lot of money. You know, you go in and lose 500 four times. Well, that's $2,000. You know, do that a few more times and that begins to to add up. And I think that you can be, end up with a death of a thousand cuts if you're not, especially if you're not catching that occasional outlier. Like you catch something like the TLSA trade today that really helps to make you have a really good day. Now, Remember, it, it, we all have a bit of an ego problem. Otherwise, I don't think we'd be in this business. But you do catch those big winners. You get a little full of yourself. And you got to be careful that you don't end up with a dozen losses or half a dozen losses after catching one big trade. And then the flip side of that is when you do get some knocked out on a few and then the mother of all opportunities comes along, you're going to have to have the right mindset to take that extra trade, knowing that you might get stopped out again and it might be painful, but it's worth it. Now, I haven't done this as much as I should, but usually when I make a trade, especially if it's a if it's an intraday trade, if I'm following my methodology, especially on a stock that I've recommended, then all I have to do, I know all you have to do, easier said than done, but all I have to do is get in where I say get in, Put the stop where I say put the stop. Take initial profits, if blessed, where I say to take initial profits and trail the stop, as I said, to trail the stop. That's all I have to do. But if you are trading off the cuff a little bit because you don't know where these setups are going to come from intraday, then you run the risk of, of losing discipline and it could be the discipline not to take the mother of all opportunities, and it could be the loss of discipline and taking too many perceived opportunities. So on every trade, and I do have a point, I'm going to get there. Every trade, at least I've been working towards doing this, I write FOMO, which means fear of missing out, or I write M-O-A-O, -O, which is mother of all opportunities. And... <laughs> And if I'm doing like a Kodak trade or a candy trade, something I shouldn't be doing, I know I shouldn't be doing that, I'll write shame and a big exclamation point, knowing that I'm doing the wrong thing. 
And if I get rewarded from it, I can't let it go to my head. And if I get, if I lose, then I realize that it was stupid anyway. So be really careful with those S and G trades, especially in this current environment. Make sure you think you have the mother of all opportunities, MLAO, before going in. Now, I talk a lot about being careful of chasing or going to the church of what's happening now. But I think right now we could we could at least visit it a little bit and take advantage of some of this amazing volatility that's out there. And it's been really fun interacting with you guys on Facebook because we all know, we all know it's going to come to an end. It was funny back in the day in, in 1999, it's like we thought it would go on forever. And I ended up fighting the last war a little bit. I was still chasing the momentum after the momentum had died out and holding on to some momentum stock way too long. And it was a very painful lesson. And it's funny because a lot of you guys have been been around since then and we've known each other since then. And it's kind of just the opposite now. It's like, we're all really, really, really enjoying this volatility. And we're all kind of saying, well, how long can it last? And obviously I won't publish the private messages, but maybe I can cut out a few of them anonymously and show you where some of you guys are actually where you can see what the guys are we're going back and forth on but we all are like how long can this last and hopefully we're not going to, to jinx it but there's an extreme volatility in the market right now all this excitement about electric cars blink is an electric card charger well whoop de doo they charge electric cars what why is that such a big deal i don't know I don't care, okay? Don't confuse the issue with facts. If it's going up, it's going up. But yes, all good things will come to an end. Linda Rasky and Trading Sardines, if you haven't read it, I recommend you read it. Just when you find a key to the markets, they change the lock, is what she said in there. And I thought that was a wonderful saying. And a few months ago, I did a lot of research on a lot of these index sector ETFs and the spiders and all of that. And I was amazed at the amount of intraday trends that could be traded. Well, when I tried to put that into practice, I found that the market dynamics have changed a little bit, okay? And right now, the key to the markets is these more volatile stocks, these biotechs, certain technology, and well, most technology, most anything really, technology-wise, especially COVID, biotech, et cetera, electric cars, <laughs> or unmanned aerial vehicles for the agricultural industry. That's another one of those hot stocks that are out there. But just be leery that they will change the lock, okay? So I think we have a golden opportunity here. I think we need to make as much money as fast as possible. We've got to keep our heads. We can't let it kill us. We can't let it ruin our family lives. We can't let it ruin our day jobs, okay? Because it could, you could get really, really sucked in. And if you could figure out moderation and take the best and leave the rest, write me a letter. We were in Italy years ago and we were on a little tour and sweet little older gentleman was giving us a tour and he talked about the excesses of the people of the in Pompeii and specifically the people in charge and we were visiting the brothels there and all not not actual working brothels brothels from back in the day <laughs> and anyway he said he talked about their excesses and he said if you figure out moderation write me a letter amen a couple of random thoughts on all this the equity curve gyrations lately have been absolutely insane. Since I started this presentation, I just went over and looked at my quote screen and I noticed that I had about a quarter point swing in the portfolio, the one, my more active portfolio that I do a lot, a lot of trading in. And that was just in the last, what, how long we've been here? 40 minutes, and this is an after hour. So it's, it's just absolutely insane. Now, 
you've got to be really careful, obviously, and I'm, as I'm going to say in a minute, beat the dead horse, money management, money management, money management, spoiler alert. But you have to realize that it comes with the territory, especially if you're doing these position trades. But even on that, even on that intraday trade, I let that thing retrace two points. And two points on an intraday trade is a lot, if you think about that. And luckily, I did not look at my equity when it was at its peak, although I did in my head kind of mentally monetize what I gave up because I'm still human, right? But the equity swings can be really, really, really brutal. Something that would take, used to take like a month to see like a 5% equity swing, you could see that in one day now. And by the way, I've had a couple of clients who aren't comfortable with the volatility. Keep in mind, if you look at the share size, because we're using wider stops on the position trades, we have adjusted that share size down considerably okay so and the other thing is just because you think you're in some stock that's not volatile like kodak right what kodak had moved in 20 years right just because you think you're in some stock that's not volatile doesn't mean that it can't make an extreme move so open profit drawdowns are kind of brutal but it comes to territory as i said a thousand times curtis faith in the way of the turtle talked about the fact that dennis seemed to be okay or more okay for sure with open profit drawdowns because he knew once you got into a position, you were following that trend, you would have some open profit drawdowns. Again, as a trend follower, you'll spend a lot of your time less wealthy and you have to deal with that. Now, unless you're Harvey Weinstein or Bill Cosby with an unlimited supply of roofies, okay? And by the way, it ended badly for both of those. <laughs> Good analogy, right? You can't kiss all the women. And that's the thing that I probably need to get a little bit better at, be cognizant of, is that I might be chasing too many stocks because I don't want, I'm, I'm worried about the one that gets away. The other thing I'm guilty of, and I'm doing a lot of confessions tonight, as you can tell, but one thing I've been guilty of, and if you go back and look at that SOGO trade, and it's totally something that i've done way too much it's like i'm that dog with the bone right and i'm pretty happy because i got this bone but i look down in the water and there's a dog with a much bigger bone okay so i drop my bone and go for the bone in the water like the dog what do they call it an allegory is that the right word but anyway you kind of get the idea is sometimes it's kind of mixing all my met metaphors up, but it's like the acres of diamonds are in my backyard right here or in my watch list, which I've worked hard to create. And all of a sudden I'm seeing all these shiny objects out there and I find myself chasing them a little bit. Now, again, there's a fine line between missing those other opportunities, okay, and then chasing your own tail and dying a death of a thousand cuts by taking a lot of positions and getting stopped out. Now, right now, the market is a major, major, major bad teacher. It's teaching you to go after everything. It's teaching you to chase everything. And again, we, we, we're we in amazing times right now. And I probably should have given this speech a month ago or two months ago. It's like, Dave, <laughs> that was great. That was a great speech you gave. And too bad it's no longer working, you know? My wife always tells me, um, you're, you know, well, in life and things, it's like you're always a little late to, to some of these things. And in, in the actual trade, she often tells me I'm right, but early. But I don't think I'm early now. I think we're we're in a mature volatility bull market. Now, the shame trades, like I talked about, buying Kodak pre-market, dumb, 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 stupid. Okay and buying KNDI, the candy trade, when it's going straight up. If, you, if you're if you not careful, you do that too many times, you're gonna get burnt quite a bit, and any type of S&G trades, and, it, and that's a dangerous thing, and I'm sorry that I probably ever came up with that. Like, sometimes you'll have like a little trade, which is kind of like super speculative, and you know there's a good chance you're gonna lose, but it's kind of a lottery ticket type of trade. I call it S&G. But if you do that enough, it can it could add up. And like I said, I had, I forget the number, I know it's gonna keep changing, but 
but I had three or four trades in addition to that one huge trade a day, trade today. And luckily overall I did okay, but those several trades really ate into my profit. So I need to be really cognizant of that. And one thing that I'm concerned about, and I'm also concerned about for some of you guys that are super active out there that I'm interacting with, is that things are torn down a lot faster than they are built. And I was telling this one client who's super active, actually a couple of you guys, we were talking about this. It's like, I don't want to see myself throw 30 years worth of discipline down the drain, but there's some tremendous opportunities here. So how do I find the best and leave the rest and be willing to let a few things take off without me. One thing I've been really proud about myself is my money management has been really, really, really stringent in these. My only mistake is possibly chasing, again, too many rabbits. I know I'm beating a dead horse on that, but if you find yourself with 20 open positions, you might be chasing too many opportunities. I think there's a chance if you're willing to do some brutal postmortems, I think there's a chance you could probably look at those 20 trades and realize that maybe 10 to 15 of them or more should not have been taken and that four or five that you took that really paid off were really worthwhile. So do the brutally honest postmortems if you can stomach it and handle it. The other thing I'm thinking about a lot lately is this now's the time to probably reach out and get a trading partner to help you with the checks and balances. And you guys, I, I know a few of you guys have partnered up on, on Facebook, and I would encourage you guys to continue to do that. Someday, if I get hit by a beer truck, at least you have a, a good foundation and good relationships are built. Now, very, very, very important. As you can see, I have it all in caps. Do not confuse the issue with facts and short, okay? So you're thinking, well, Kodak, that's dumb. You know, it's stupid. It, the stock shouldn't go up. Well, it went up another 50 points from where it was ludicrously stupid. Now, it did eventually come back in, but you could go broke in the process. And I know somebody that likes to short the parabolics, especially after after they've been halted a few times. And you know what? That'll work until it don't. You might get up there and short that parabolic, that stock that's going parabolic, that candy, that Kodak, whatever. You might short it as soon as it opens up after a halt. And guess what? That thing might jump so fast they could halt it again. I mean, it could happen. And you want to make sure, like I said, your risk to reward. If you're buying a stock, obviously the worst can happen is the stock goes to zero, okay? If you're buying crude oil futures, the worst can happen is they go to negative 40. <laughs> but don't confuse the issue with facts and say, well, these unmanned aerial drones or whatever the hell they are for agricultural whatever, that's the stupidest thing in stupid town. Hol holograms, remember the hologram company a while back? And see, I, I actually, I, I chased that shiny object. I actually did did uh, get a little piece of that, I think. And uh, not much, but a little piece. But that's the stupidest thing. It's stupid town. And if you apply logic to it, it's like well, holograms. What the hell is that? This is stupid. Let me short this stock. Well, you're going to get your, your ass handed to you really quickly. John says, I hate it when I trade too small. Yeah, that's the thing. It's like your your winning positions always seem to be too small and your losing positions always seem to be too big. And that's just life. And you just have to learn to live with that. And in this market, you know, small bets can pay off really big and big bets can hurt you really bad. So make sure you stay in the game and live the fight another day. And last... And not least is money management, money management, money management. Like I said, I've been really good with my money management. I might have been letting my ego get the best of me, and I might be chasing a few too many stocks, as I think I've admitted a thousand times tonight. So that's my public declaration that I probably could chase fewer stocks, maybe just stick to my lander list mostly, and then allow myself a couple of those guilty pleasures out there. Now, 
I've heard before, I hate to use an analogy with a value player because I'm not a big fan of the value players. But I think it was Buffett or Charlie Munger once said, imagine you had a roll of 10 tickets and every time you place the trade, you have to give up a ticket. And that's kind of been in the back of my head lately when I'm off chasing these rainbows. Like what would be the best setup to take if I'm going to take an intraday trade? And ideally that would be the one that's already set up on a daily chart, the one that I want to be in for a position trade and the one that I want to use the intraday trade to get a head start on the position trade. Now, keep in mind that if the markets become choppy and the volatility dries up, you don't want to be doing that kind of that front running, so to speak, by getting in early on the intraday trade. Right now, I think is a chance, a golden opportunity to be able to do that. OK, don't throw caution to the wind. But you could go in with a small share size for an intraday trade and then be willing to hold that longer term, okay? Just don't go crazy with it. And hopefully that makes sense. And I'm going to flesh this out. This won't be our last presentation, this, I promise. So, you know, trading can be really lonely. The best thing I've ever done was start this Facebook group. But as I say, you have to be a gold member of daylander.com. That's to keep the riffraff out. <laughs> All joking aside, as I've said quite a bit, I've been involved with a lot of groups over the years. And usually they just, even, even professional groups ended up being disappointing because it just kind of, they just, I don't know, de-evolved or something becomes a Lord of the, uh, what is it? Lord of the flies. What is that analogy? Anyway, but knock on wood, this group has been phenomenal, and I've learned a lot, and I've picked up a lot of great setups. The great thing is you can ask for help, and as I often say, many people answer the questions before I'm able to see the question and chime in, and I appreciate you guys doing that. New guys are really doing a great job. Old guys are really doing a great job helping new guys. And then every now and now, throw out some signs and signals and some trades like opening gap reversals. So you'll be able to see some of the stuff that I'm doing. I don't want to turn it into like a day trade group because I think there's a huge danger in that. But I think if it's a setup on a daily chart, like I've been preaching about for a lot of this presentation, where you've got a nice setup on a daily chart and then maybe like an intraday pullback on that chart when it begins to rally nicely, something like that, I think can be be thrown out. And I think that's a a good way, like I said, to get a head start on a position trade. Anyway, so if you're not a member of DaveLander.com, I would encourage you to do so. And I've this has exceeded my wildest expectations as far as the feedback that I've gotten. And there's some things that I know I can do better, and, and I I'll work on that. But for the most part, I've just been blown away. So thank, thank you guys who are already members. And if you want to become a member, DaveLander.com slash members all right let's get to the live charts i want to spend a little time on the market and then we'll open it up for individual stock picks so if you want to, if you there's a stock you like let me know what it is and we'll take a look at it and while you're thinking let me go ahead and bang on a few things with the overall market so let's start off with the with the peas as we normally do and then we'll take a look at some sectors here and then we'll open up to individual questions. First of all, S&P 500. One thing I've been doing a lot lately is I've been, in addition to things like bow ties and all, I've been doing a lot of research with the 30 period EMA. And let me just show you that real quick. And more specifically, the Landry light with it. And if you go in and watch last week's show, you can see where I talked about using the indicator over at ACP at Stock Charts, the advanced charting platform. But you can see we've had Landry Light for almost this entire trend. We had a few kisses of the moving average, which is okay. Notice this downtrend. We had Landry Light for nearly the whole thing. And a show that I'm probably going to do fairly soon, if, if I get around to doing it, is everything works better with trends. So Take a look at this Landry light all the way up. You had a couple of kisses of, of the moving average, but that's actually a buying opportunity. And I'll show you a real a setup real quick there that we talked about last week. 
but you can see we're still in this uptrend and the market looks pretty darn good. I'd love to see new highs in the S&P 500 and I'd love to see us take out this recent high in here. Okay, yeah, keep the picks coming. But so far, so good, as you can see. Let me just show you something real quick. The OCFT, which is one of our long trades. This is the one I showed you where Landry Light pullbacks is where you get a nice trend above the moving average. In other words, Landry Light. And then you get a kiss of the moving average, okay? And I used the 20 EMA, and you could use a 20 EMA. Lately, I like the 30 because some of these things just blast higher like this. If they correct all the way back to the 30, then you got potential for a nice little bounce out and hopefully, and I know I just said hope, but hopefully something much, much longer. So that's land your light pullbacks. And I don't know the exact URL. I think it's davelander.com slash free book, all one word. And if you go to that URL, I'll give you a copy of the layman's guide to trading stocks. And in it, I have the land your light pullbacks. And the reason I came up with that pattern, it's not something that I trade directly, although I've been paying a lot of attention to them lately. I wanted something to kind of, not necessarily quantify, but kind of qualify a pullback for somebody a little newer to trading, something that you could easily see. Just like when I came out with bow ties, I was all I was already looking at transitions, but the moving average helped me to see the transition in place. And that's how the bow ties caught on as a very popular pattern because they're easy to see and easy to recognize. So I would encourage you, if you're newer to trading, find something simple like that. Bow tie is a little bit more advanced, but maybe start off with, with the Landry Light pullbacks and then slowly add additional patterns. As I preach ad nauseum, if you're not successful with one pattern, you're not gonna be successful with 10. And Linda Rasky once said, all you need is one pattern to be successful. Now, before I digress too far, nice little upside Landry Light in the NASDAQ composite. If we take a look at the moving averages, the bowtie moving averages, you can see they've been in uptrend proper order for a long, 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 long time, going all the way back to this day here. They've been in uptrend proper order for 28%. Dave, that's awesome. I'm going to trade proper order. 28%, that's amazing. Well, keep in mind, everything works better with trend, okay? So if the market does trend, it works incredibly well. Just like the last time we had downtrend proper order, the market dropped, what, 23%, okay? Now, I, I do I spend a lot of time telling you that stuff isn't as great as it normally seems. I probably should act like these gurus out there. And make you think it's the greatest things to slide spread. Everything has its nuances, though. I'm going to be perfectly frank with you. But when the market is trending, pick your favorite trend indicator, bow ties, land your light, whatever you want to do. And you're going to be amazed at how well it works. It's when the market is choppy, you got to be really careful. You have to be really careful. But anyway, you can see proper order for a long, long time. That looks fantastic in the NASDAQ composite. Let's take a look at a rusty. Now, the Rusty is looking okay longer term. You can take a look at this 30-day EMA, and you can see most of that trend was contained by that. And in, in general, it's had upside Landry Light and mostly proper order. Now, notice one thing good about using bow ties as opposed to just Landry Light, and you could use both of them, right? But when a market gets choppy like it does here, you begin to intersect the bow ties, and I have an indicator that shows you when they're intersecting and not in proper order, okay? So this would warn you that, hey, this market's getting a little choppy in here, we're starting to intersect, and then you're back to proper order. It's like, okay, well, maybe we're okay again. And notice that the 30 sort of held, it never really did go below the 30. It closed below the 30, it probed below the 30, but it never did have downside Landry light. So, so far, so good there. Yeah, keep the stock picks coming. We're almost, I'm almost done. A couple more things to show you. Gold a commodity. Look at that. You know, every time I look at gold, I feel like tiny elves. Look at look at that trend. It's huge. <laughs> Today I was joking. It's it's like I wanted to buy a hundred shares of huge just so I could uh I could talk about it. It's like, hey, look at that stock, it's huge. But anyway, I digress. Where was I? Gold, the commodity. Look at that. Nice, nice. I've never seen such a persistent, nice trend in gold. And this could be a golden opportunity, no pun intended. Normally gold stocks are super, super, super duper choppy. 
An example I gave was AUI. We, was it still AUI? Yeah, we were in this stock forever. And I know a lot of people gave up, but we got in way back here and it chopped around for months and months and months. And how long did that take? It took us, geez, six months, eight months to really get paid off on this stock. You know, that's normally how a gold stock works. You don't have this nice persistency of trend. And by the way, put this one on your watch list. Look at that. It could pull back a little bit more for my taste, but it looks pretty darn good. Nice little base breakouts. You've got a nice little trend here, so that looks really, really good. Not yet, but it's getting there. Let's take a look at silver real quick. Silver, pretty amazing. Look at that nice little uptrend beginning to pull back a little bit. This could be a silver opportunity, right? <laughs> Gold stocks looking really nice in here, beginning to pull back a little bit. Nice little breakout, pulling back. Silver stocks, same thing there, okay? So that's exciting. Let's take a look at biotech and drugs. So far, longer term uptrend in drugs, just pulling back a little bit in here. Biotech, same sort of thing, a little bit of a bounce today. Looking pretty good. If we take out this pivot in here, that would really be a good thing. If I can make it work, make it work. <laughs> My wife, she watches all that stuff. That's not me. Anyway, health services got whacked a little bit today in here, but look at yesterday. Look at that, banging out new highs with vigor. There's tiny Elvis again. Down a little today, but I, I wouldn't get too excited about that. You know, it's a little bit less than a half percent. I'm, I'm sorry, a little bit less than 1% on that. Some areas in here not so hot. So I'm sure you could argue that the breath isn't fantastic, but who cares, okay? If you can get into a little biotech stock or a little stock that charges cars or an unmanned aerial drone agricultural stock that's going straight up, who cares? Okay. If the if the if the breath is narrow, yes, one day that's gonna matter. Okay. But I think that if you're too caught up in that, you could miss what's happening. And and I, I miss what's happening for a while, I think a little bit because I was a little caught up in like, okay, this doesn't make sense. And then I realized that I was confusing the issue with facts. My watch just told me it's, it's glad that I'm moving. I guess I'm getting jazzed. <laughs> anyway, metals and mining looks like uh, gold, as you can see, looking pretty good in here. I've been keeping an eye on metals and mining in general. Instead of just scanning golds every night, look through all the golds, I'll look through all the metals and mining, at least the more liquid ones. Health services, as I just said, pull back a little bit. Some of these areas like transports beginning to wake up in here. You know, notice they've, they've rallied up higher. I've been keeping an eye on this dry ship thing. It hadn't really taken off just yet, but it's kind of bottomed out and it's losing a little steam out of its rally, but it's it looks okay in here. So maybe this is another sector we could chalk up to possibly headed higher or continuing a new leg higher. But as you can tell, I'm really a big bull on biotech health services, gold. And then, you know, if you take a look at a lot of these technology areas, hardware, and if you have hardware, you need software, right? Looking pretty good, Ed, here. I had a friend of mine used to used to actually like that movie. What was it? Um, Ishtar? Ashtar? No. What movie was that? Dustin Hoffman and somebody else. It was the world's worst movie. They sang a song. Hardware, you got to have software for your hardware. Anyway, semiconductors, bam, winning right here at brand new highs. But so far, so good as a general statement. Bonds, by the way, headed higher in here, not that far from all time highs. So that's that's a good thing for now. Bad thing if you're if you need fixed income, which we all do a little. All right, let's take a look at Baba for Laurent. Oh, that's bad. Baba, um, kind of chopping around in here. I hear you. It's in kind of an uptrend. It's broken out. I just think there's so many other stocks in there. Look at tonight's Landry list. So if you get bored and go with some of those stocks, I've got a list of 303. And as I said earlier today, I could probably call it down to maybe 250 or so. You know, just for S and G's, let's just see what happened today. 
let's take a look at this. Take a look at my big list. This is my big momentum list. Look at look at this momentum list. 469%, 59%, 29, that's blink. 25%. I mean, some of these stocks are household names, overstock.com. Okay. So if you don't believe me, T T L S A, I played that one. Okay. That was good today, obviously. But quite a few stocks in here looking fantastic and having fantastic moves today. So this is the kind of market that we're in. You can tell I'm excited. I'm very excited. <laughs> GBTC, I'd rather just trade Bitcoin outright. As I've talked about quite a bit in the Facebook group, you do have a, a premium on that. And you'll have to give me a second to shift gears because I cannot. Uh, GBTC is not in Telechart for some reason. And I don't know why. So let me get it set up in the background and then I'll flip over to it once it uh, gets loaded. In fact, we could do that real quick and we could do some um, we could do some of that Landry light analysis while we're here. So this is the the ACP platform which I've been really enjoying and it's been a lot of fun. I had the programmers put in my indicators and I like to put the Landry light in a 30 day EMA. So let's do that and take a look at Bitcoin. And I think Tiny Elvis is going to come out once again. So let's take a look at Landry Light down here. Let's set it for 30. Let's set it for EMA. And I'll have to talk to him and see if he'd be willing to put these parameters in there as defaults. And the reference level, I'm going to set to 10. I think 10 days of Landry Light is a good little trend. Okay. So there you have it, that's S&P 500. So let's take a look at Bitcoin. Now, as I alluded to, if you're gonna trade Bitcoin, just trade Bitcoin, okay? Um, the GBTC has a lot of premium in it. And as somebody pointed out on internet, as long as that premium is expanded, that could actually work in your favor. But that premium could come off really quick. Also, think about this. I mean, I know as crazy as Bitcoin is, as potentially corrupt as it is. But think about this. And this is one thing I've been thinking about lately because I was thinking about doing a presentation for someone, someone else, someone outside of trading regarding silver and gold and investing in GLD and SLB and things like that versus hard assets. And that's a story for another time. But one thing I was thinking about is these companies have people in them okay so if you actually own physical gold or physical silver you actually have that and there's a lot of problems with it and a lot of issues that i won't get into but at least you actually have that and it's not held by someone and you have to expect those people to do the right thing so gbtc has people involved with it okay you're, you're depending on them to control your asset and anytime you get people involved bad things can happen okay maybe they won't maybe they never will and you know if, if you got a an ira or something and you want a, a little exposure to bitcoin i hear you you know trade the gbtc i've traded it before just so i could show people that i actually trade it and show some live trades with it but i would much rather trade bitcoin i am long big bitcoin dave why are you long bitcoin well because it's going up okay <laughs> quite simple but you can see Bitcoin, Bitcoin, Bitcoin looks fantastic. It could use a little bit of pullback, maybe a knockout type of move, but you have nice little, nice Landry light here. You can see the little green down here. And we have, I think 10 bars of it so far. So you can see nice little uptrend, nice little base breakout here. So it looks fantastic. Ethereum also looks pretty good too. Don't bet the forum on this stuff. You know, as I've said a thousand times, I trust these exchanges as far as I could throw them. Recently, I've done some transactions using Bitcoin, and it's been nothing short of a nightmare. <laughs> okay. I don't want to digress too far. But the actual trading of the markets, I think, is is definitely a viable thing when they're trending. Okay. And as I've said before, everything works better with trend. But notice how nicely Ethereum trends, nice little green here. Once you get 10 bars of Landry Light, write that down. Start looking for a place to get in. Look, right here, you got plenty of Landry Light, nice little pullback. Sometimes you're going to pull back to that moving average, and that might be a good place to get in, as I've said before, okay? 
Notice how you had red, you had a little kiss of the moving average and it continued lower. But remember, everything works better with trend. So there will be times when this market and every other market in the world will chop around and you figure out how to stay out of those choppy markets, you will eventually own the world. But anyway, you can see this is a lot of fun to play with. So if you get bored, check out this ACP platform, throw them a little indicators in the bottom. And when, when a market is trending, you're going to be amazed. And when it's not trending, you won't be amazed, but look down here. Notice that you had green and no green, and then you had some red, and then no red, a little red, and then no red, then you had some green, things getting a little better. Nope, not so great. And then all of a sudden you get 10 days of Landry light, and what happens? The market takes off, okay? So yeah, I would definitely pay attention to the underlying cryptos as opposed to the gbtc eth what's the what's the um eth e or eth what's the uh, ethereum one so that's another one that the gray what's the name of the company graystone or grayscale whatever the name is grayscale is a dragon right <laughs> um one of those things one of those companies is uh that launched gbtc they also launched a uh, ethereum one but again trade the other one is Landry Light available to everyone in stock charts? Yes, it's it's uh, it's the Oprah of indicators. You get some Landry Light, you get some Landry Light. Everybody gets Landry Light, okay? But it's only in the ACP platform. So you have to go to the ACP, the, the ACP platform and you load the plugin. You see this little plug down here, click on that. And then click on Big Dave and you'll get it, you'll get it for free. Uh, I don't think it's available for free members. I think you probably at least have to be a uh, entry level at the least. Okay, GL, what is this? GL, GDLF, GDLNF, never heard of it. Greenland Minerals and Energy, okay. Pink sheet. Um, yeah, I mean, this is a penny stock, Gary, so it probably wouldn't catch my attention, although lately these penny stocks begun to, have begun to take off and become more than penny stocks, but it's nothing that I would actually trade on the pink sheet, but it's beginning to trend in here. If it begins to trend nicely, then maybe you look to uh, play pullbacks along the way. VUZI, also for Gary. Now that looks great, okay? Notice you've got a nice, nice Landry night, nice little pullback. Let me jump to this other platform. Let me jump back real quick to Telechart, where I'm more familiar with looking at the charts. Although I am beginning to really enjoy this ACP platform. So give them a shout out. I, I am not compensated by stock charts other than they put me in front of eyeballs. And if you like what you see, that's great. And if not, go have no fun somewhere else. <laughs> Vuzi, V-U-Z-I. Yeah, this looks pretty good. It could actually use a little bit more pullback, but you've got plenty of volume in this thing, okay? And you've got a nice blast higher and a pullback. Now, I've been a, a bit picky, and I'm always picky when it comes to stocks, and I'm finding myself having to be a little less picky because I'm missing some really big winners. But I would prefer if it would have pulled back a little bit more deeply than this one has so far. But it does look pretty good. And that definitely needs to be in your momentum list. Hey, Big Dave, is it in your momentum list? Well, I'm glad you asked. Look at it right there. Bam. It's in my list. So it should be in yours, too. VRM. I know this one. Yeah, this one's kind of all over the place. I've been watching it. It's an IPO. If it didn't have this big old bar here and it ran up and had a deeper trace, I'd probably be more over it or, or all, all over it, I meant to say. For me, it would have to break out the new highs and then make a pullback, okay? So keep it in your watch list, but not seeing anything yet. GSX, I think I'm on the fence on that one. Oh, wrong stock. Never mind. I'm thinking of uh, GAN. Yeah, this one needs to be in your momentum list. And hey, Dave, is in your momentum list? Yeah, look at it right there. Okay. 
Uh, but it's not set up at this particular junction. Here's a case of a stock that really didn't pull back deep enough for me, and then it could be taken off without me. But yeah, definitely keep that on your watch list. Wait for a deeper pullback. Yeah, HDBX, that's that's one I've been watching. I know, I know. A HV82. I mean, even ludicrous would say that's ludicrous, right? Is that one any more minimalist? Yes, it is. It's right here. <laughs> Look at that. 182 for the HV. And you know, this is what some of these crazy stocks are providing opportunities. Don't bet the form. You know, use them, use a three dollar stop. You trade this one, right? But maybe above this little pivot high, very risky trade. Okay, for the more aggressive trader, with risk comes reward. You know, this 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 thing, as crazy as it sounds, would take at least a one point stop, at least if you're going to try to position trade it. Okay. Yeah, BDRY is kind of rallying out. We just talked about that one a few minutes ago, Laurent. Um, it's kind of already rallying out. Let's take the bow ties here. Let's see if we can do them. There we go. It's already kind of rallying out of that bow tie cup and handle, and now it's kind of forming a bigger picture cup and handle. So this is more of a bigger picture, longer term pattern. But yeah, this is why I've been putting that on the, this one on the Landry list and mentioning this one, and I've got it in my market watch list. So it's not really set up right now, though. If you're long, stay long. I, you know, in my next life, I might do some portfolio allocation, although I'm having way too much fun trading right now. I know I shouldn't use the word fun in trading because trading done properly should be boring, right, Dave? That's what I preach. But in my next life, I might do some asset allocation where it's like, okay, I like BDRY because we have Landry Light and I want to be long BDRY. I want to be long the spiders. I might look at something like GERM and I might want to be long that, you know, just to give me some exposure to the church and what's happening now and so on and so forth. So the BDRY would be kind of like a, a longer term possible position trade if you were setting up a portfolio or something. Uh, VRM IPO base. No, no, uh, we just talked about that one. You know, I hear you though, and when an IPO makes a new high, you can almost buy new IPOs on new highs with quite a few caveats, but yeah. But yeah, put it on your watch list for sure. BMR, BMRA from Mr. John, glad you're here tonight. John, we're talking about you. John is the person who talked about the return to paradise. In fact, I actually have a list of return to paradise. Oh, that's return to paradise, look at that, okay. Now this one's a little bit on the crazy side, okay. But John R., who's in the group tonight, came up with this little pattern. He says, okay, look for something to blast higher, come back in, base for a while, and then take off again. One thing that I've done with this, just to not quantify, but just kind of help you wrap your head around or maybe give you something to qualify them, is what would happen if you and go in and watch i'm not going to go through all the details so you can go back and watch we could charge from three weeks ago i think but if you take a look at the unmanned aerial drone company okay same sort of pattern it blasted higher came back in and so what i was thinking about to qualify these is okay step number one it has to uh, blast higher step number two it has to at least pull back to its 30 day ema step number three you need a wide range bar where it closes above the open now, the problem is I discovered this pattern before, <laughs> I think it was this particular st the stock I discovered on. I didn't have enough time to do enough research. So this was like on a Friday and on a Monday, it had already gotten away from me. By the way, that looks kind of interesting. Nice little Landry light there. looks like it's poised to make a new trend higher. VMRA, did we talk about that? Yeah, okay, so let's go back to VMRA, VMRA. This one's a little bit on the crazy side, but I hear you, John. I mean, this this market, Crazy times call for crazy patterns and crazy people, right? It's just, you've got the Landry Light pullback here. It's really unorthodox, okay? If you asked me about this stock three months ago, I'd probably say no. But yeah, if you're a super aggressive trader, as I know you are, by all means, that's a good looking stock. You're probably already long, aren't you? <laughs> BNTX, we talk about that one? BNTX. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, absolutely. That better be my momentum list. Hang on. It sure is. Okay. Yeah, and that's kind of a, that's kind of that return to paradise thing you were talking about. Because if you come back here, you could see it took off back here, came down, 
And, you know, I think the 30 day provides as good as base as, as any. Maybe you guys want to experiment with like the 20 day EMA, which I used to really love. But yeah, this is a fantastic looking stock. I like it a lot. I'm going to give you a high five on that one for sure, John. Absolutely. So that needs to be in your watch list, possibly your setup list. I am seeing a lot of lower priced biotech stocks right now that look like they have tremendous potential. But by all means, this looks darn good too. So he's not long yet. I'll let you guys with the big bucks test out my patterns. <laughs> It's actually pretty smart. I mean, I, I'm guilty of, of trading things way too soon. Uh, but I think that this particular market we're in, some of this stuff, I think it's going to go away. You know, this return to paradise, that could go away. CAPR for Mr. John. Yeah, that's another one of those 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 uh, return to paradise looking patterns. Let me jump over here where I could more used to the way it looks. We got time for maybe one more. And then I'll have to wrap it up. Yeah, this is kind of interesting. Super volatile, obviously 192, but eh, everything's a one, 124. Everything's super volatile at this juncture. I don't know if I would rush out and trade this one, but I, I have to say if I saw, if I did see it up big tomorrow, it would definitely catch my eye because you do have some structure here. It's made a nice run higher, nice deep pullback. So yeah, put that one on your momentum list. But Dave, is it on your momentum list? Well, I'm glad you asked. Look at it right there. Bam. <laughs> one time I was doing this and my list was on the side and everybody kept asking me about stocks at the list. And it's like, it's like, man, you're so good. <laughs> you're picking every stock that I pick. How how are you? How do you know? And somebody's like, we can see your list. <laughs> All right, my time is up. I've had a blast tonight. I hope you guys weren't too bored, but uh, if you were, then go have no no fun somewhere else. <laughs> Math kidding. Everybody have a great night. We'll talk to you tomorrow, I suppose, for you guys in the group. For everybody else, have a great weekend. And I really, again, I had a blast. So thank you guys for showing up tonight. We'll try to figure out whether I can uh, do this or not. I start at four, so I've been at, I've been at this for 17 hours so far today. I'll see how long I can keep the pace up. But uh, everybody, have a great night. And of course, have a great weekend. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome.